The video review will start in a few seconds, but if you're watching this on YouTube, remember if you have a question, comment, or suggestion for me, you can post it on 3dgameman.com and the link is provided below. Hello again, I'm Rodney Weddle from 3dgameman.com and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Thermaltake Armor Revo Jean Snow Edition case. This is a wonderful looking box with pictures of the product on it, but there's very little information like features and specifications on the box itself, which is not a big deal because a lot of people these days buy online and of course there you can find out all the information that you need. Now let me open it up and let's see what's inside. It's packaged very well in two humongous pieces of styrofoam on either end and the case itself is in this beautiful bag. They include a user's manual as well as warranty information and again this gorgeous bag, I'll take it off, voila! Here is the case. They have protective plastic on the window. I'll remove that. This mid tower case comes in two different colors. This one, white or the snow edition, as well as black. It's mainly comprised of steel, plastic, and some aluminum. Lots of stuff going on here at the top. You've got a 200 millimeter exhaust fan included, but you can also install 120 as well as 140 millimeter fans up here. Of course, you could fit our radiator up here, no problem as well. Here we have a drive dock that will easily fit a three and a half inch as well as a two and a half inch drive. Here's the microphone jack, headphone jack, reset button, power button. By the way, these buttons are quality as well as a hard drive activity LED. On the right side, you've got four USB ports, two USB three as well as two USB two. They have this design here at the front top center. A couple of aluminum XM pieces right here. By the way, these can be removed if you want to. Take them off like so, although it doesn't really look that great with them off. I would recommend just leaving them on. You've got four external five and a quarter inch drive bays as well as one external three and a half inch drive bay. There's another 200 millimeter fan here at the front, but this one intakes cool air and note their logo. At the back, they include three rubber grommeted holes for water cooling tubes and or cables to pass through as well as a 140 millimeter exhaust fan. Here's where the motherboard's IO shoe plate gets installed and they include seven ventilated expansion slots and each one of these has a thumb screw on it so you can very easily install and remove the cards with those thumb screws. As well at the top left here you've got a security loop and you can take this off from the inside then put your cables through it like your mouse or your keyboard cables and that way they'll be secure especially good if you're at a LAN party. At the back of the case they include three rubber grommeted holes for water cooling tubes and or cables to pass through. They include a 120 millimeter exhaust fan. Here's where the motherboard's IO shield plate gets installed. They have this little security loop here at the top where you can put your cables through like for example keyboard and mouse cables. You just take this off from the inside then put the cables through and once you've done that it's secure because the plug ends of the cables well won't allow the cables to come out and thus securing your keyboard and mouse perfect if you're at a LAN party. Seven ventilated expansion slots as well each one of these has a thumb screw on it and this will make it very easy to remove and install cards. At the bottom is where you install a standard ATX power supply and they have four thumb screws too on each side panel. Now this is a small thing but I thought I'd mention it. A lot of cases these days are coming with these types of thumb screws on the side panels. You remove them like so and they kind of just hang there. They do not come out all the way which is good because sometimes well you have your thumb screws kicking around, they fall on the floor, and that way you can just leave them attached to the side panels, take off the side panel, and do what you need to do. This mid-tower case fits micro ATX and standard ATX form factor motherboards. As you can see on the inside, it is black. The motherboard tray has lots of cable management holes, as well as a large hole on the motherboard tray for the cooler's retention plate. Note that all of the drive bays have a toolless design. I'll show you that in just a minute. The top four, remember, are the five and a quarter inch drive bays, and there's another four internal drive bays for installing three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives. And they have this accessory bag, which is just kind of hanging off the inside of the case end. This has cable ties, a speaker and screws, and so on and so forth. Now, in fact, you can install up to five two and a half inch or five three and a half inch drives. You can install the extra one here just above the other main four. Now, 
Now installing drives in these bottom four drive bays is really easy, especially if they are three and a half inch drive. Simply pop them in, kind of bend it open like so, and then pop the three and a half inch drive in and slide it back into place. If you're installing a two and a half inch drive, you will need to use the included screws. Now power supply length and video card length is approximately the same at 315 millimeters. However, the power supply length will vary. It depends on whether you have the optional 120 millimeter fan installed. Now the CPU cooler height on this case is a little bit more than on most cases. Most cases the CPU cooler height is limited to 160 millimeters but this case the CPU cooler height is 175 millimeters. Now have a closer look at this top 200 millimeter fan as well the included dust filter but the dust filter unfortunately isn't that easy to remove. At the bottom are four swing out feet. You just swing these out if you want to stabilize the case and usually these are only on full tower cases but hey they still work and they're also tall and that means that it will keep the bottom of the case off of a soft surface like carpet so the bottom fan or fans can do their job and intake cool air. And they have a humongous dust filter here at the bottom. It simply slides out. You can clean it and slide it back into place. This is for the bottom fans if you choose to install the optional 120 millimeter and of course the power supplies intake fan would be here. Now have a look at the back of the motherboard tray. As I mentioned earlier there are lots of rubber grommeted cable management holes as well as a large hole on the motherboard tray for the cooler's retention plate but note that there are no punch outs to actually physically attach the cables to however there are holes here so you can organize the cables it's kind of like a bit of a different system finally have a listen to the stock cooling keeping in mind that they include three fans but remember you can install more if you want to to recap they include two 200 millimeter fans there is one at the top exhausting the warm air another one at the front but this one's a blue led intake fan and they include a 120 millimeter fan at the back This is a great looking case. The build quality is really good as well. Plenty of features and as well you got two color choices white or black. My preference would be the black. However, this case, the styling on it might be something that you're not really fond of. I like it, but it is a little bit over the top, especially with these aluminum wings, I guess you call them, at the front. They can be removed, but when you remove them, well, it doesn't really look that great. But overall, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. I hope you enjoyed this video review, and please note that pricing for this product is available on the 3D Game Man video review page.